if we don't even have any conversation before, there will be nothing to put on in during the sound. So I'm just going to say this. Hey, I'm Obi, that's Ed, and we are Drinking from the Garden Hose, your favorite podcast. Guess wherever you get your podcast. Also, you can find us online. I know Ed knows your URL. He's going to give that to you in a minute because I don't have it in front of me, and I know he's scrambling to find it, too. Um, Ed, how are you, and what's our URL? Holy shit, man. Did you put me on the, did you put me on the spot here? But it is... Um... Uh, it is uh, garden hose dot vercel v e r c e l dot app a p p. So it's garden hose dot vercel v e r c e l dot a p p. Easy to find, but it's a great place to give us feedback, and you know how much we love feedback. You know how many of these shows can turn on feedback, uh, whether it's from my brother. Ed's nemesis, that guy in Florida, a dingo ate my baby, just some of our many fans who would like to, to take part. We want you to be the next one to uh, give us feedback. So now, Ed, for real, how are you? I'm doing well, but I got two things, Obi, that are on my mind right now that I got to get off my mind, okay? One, and you, we can go either way you want on this one. One, last week, I met my daughter's boyfriend for the first time. That I'll, so I'm just going to leave that out there for you to, to to digest. And the other thing is concert tickets. Obi, it is unbelievable how expensive concert tickets are these days. You cannot get a concert ticket for I, I, I don't even know what's reasonable anymore, but I'll give you an example. You two in Vegas, over six hundred dollars to see them play in Vegas. OK. But you know what? That's a once in a lifetime thing at the sphere with all those lights. I, you know, okay. But then my daughter likes this guy Noah Khan. Have you heard of this guy Noah Khan? No. He's like a oh, you haven't even heard of him. He's like a folk singer, apparently. I think he's country, but he's like folk singer. He uh sings a song that's near and dear to my heart called Drunk Dial. Not that I love the song, but just the title's kind of near and dear to my heart. And uh, he's playing Madison Square Garden in July, and my daughter wants to go. Sold out show. I'm like, ah, for shits and giggles, how much? 600 bucks to see a guy no one's ever heard of. Well, people must have heard of him if he's playing Madison Square Garden. Ed. Okay, but if I haven't heard of him, it's not like a lot of people. How can I go? How can I see the Stones for $270? I know they're 80, but I'm seeing them for 270, yet Noah Khan's 600. Make sense of it, Obi. Well, first of all, I can't believe the Stones are only 280. I mean, people are going to see if one of them die on stage, right? Like, isn't that the whole thing? Are one of these dudes going to just collapse and die? Am I going to see a famous person die? Like, That's the point of going to see the Stones right now, isn't it? I don't know. I, I know one thing. I'm glad I'm seeing them early in the tour. I think my chances of seeing them are higher. If it's earlier in the tour, listen, if they died on stage, that would suck, man. Cause I'm thinking you're not going to get a refund. You, <laughs> you might, you might not hear your songs. They might be still playing songs off the album that they just released that no one knows because they only want to hear the hits. Yeah. So anyway, those are the two things. So I just told you my thing about concert tickets are ridiculous. I don't know what other people think. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip concert tickets because you, you, which, which daughter? And tell me about the boyfriend. <laughs> the oldest daughter in yeah. college. All right. Met herself a <laughs> Jersey Italian. <laughs> hey, forget about it. <laughs> so, you know, and uh, a lot of people know I have this thing about Jersey Italians. I haven't gone to college in, in at Rutgers. I mean, I have so many stereotypes about those individuals. And, um, and then, yeah, my daughter brings home one. So, uh, of course, we talked about the Sopranos. <laughs> Is, is Vinny Bag of Donuts even old enough to remember The Sopranos? So it's so funny that uh, he watched The Sopranos this past summer. Okay. All right. <laughs> because obviously it came out before he was born. It came out before my daughter was born, right? This guy, this kid's a sophomore. He's a year older than my daughter. Um, he's from down the shore area. He doesn't, you know, he's like 20 minutes from the beach. So he's not really at the beach. And uh, yeah, so it was really interesting. He, he, and uh, here's the other thing, Obi. He wanted to meet us. 
like he i think he pressured my daughter into meeting us oh he thinks this relationship is serious he, he he's got to meet the family yeah but isn't is that an italian thing or is that a just a stupid thing i don't understand like i i t- when i was younger i was never in a rush to meet my girlfriend's parents as a matter of fact i would have been content going my whole life without ever meeting them um uh, I, I don't know what that is uh, I, I don't i that is i think that's one of these newfangled uh emotionally um mature individual things that these college boys are doing it's the only explanation i got i got I, no, yeah i, I mean, got nothing either but i asked them so i you know we we had dinner we met for dinner we went out had some pizza and uh, I was very nice to him this whole dinner. And, you know, I was my usual jovial self, making him feel really at ease. And then I said, OK, here's the tough question. And my daughter just looks at me. Oh, my God. Ed, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I'm like, well, Sam, you knew I was going to ask a tough question. I mean, and I said, so here's the tough question. Why did you want to meet me so bad? <laughs> he didn't see that one coming. He also gave a kind of a weak ass answer. Well, because I met, you know, Sam met my parents, so I thought I should meet you. I, I you know, wasn't really impressive. Wasn't really impressive. Did, did not did not hold up the, well, I'm, re- you know, believe it or not, I know it's only been a few months and we just met. And I'm really into Sam and, and I want Oh, no, no, that would have been the worst answer if he said that <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, he should have said something like, I heard how great of a guy you are, or I follow you on social media and you're hilarious and I needed <laughs> to meet you. Like, if this guy really wants to kiss up, I mean, come on, don't tell me because you think I'm, it's a fucker. I'm a big fan of the podcast. When can I meet Obi? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes. That's the type of answer I was looking for. I mean, if you're going to give me some weak ass answer about it's proper, come on. I just wanted you to know he's sleeping with your daughter. That's what that meant. It's proper. Sorry, Ed. <laughs> Obi, why'd you have to go there? So then, so, so, so here's the something that I got to throw out there. I, again, he was, he was very, very polite during the meal, didn't say anything wrong. You could tell he was nervous. Nice guy. Nice kid, though. Nice. But two things stuck out to me. Well, one really stuck out to me. Holy shit, are 19-year-old kids young? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't realize that when your daughter was being was busy being 19. Uh, I, I mean, after the dinner, I looked at my wife. I said, oh, my God, he's just a little boy. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's a kid. He's Holy a kid. shit. Yeah, Which is, thank God she didn't bring some man to, to meet right, me. That would have, right? right? Exactly. So that's good. He's just kidding. The other thing is, I'm pretty sure, and again, he was really nice, but I'm pretty sure he forgot to thank me for the meal. <laughs> pretty sure he forgot to thank you for the meal. Okay. All right. Well, uh, that's, that's, that's more of a red flag than being a kid. I mean, uh, you know, that, that is problematic. <laughs> I'll I tell you, the amount of times that... Uh, Alex's girlfriend thanks us for stuff. It, it's like obnoxious. Like stop it, stop yeah. it. Yeah. So I, 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 and I'm not. I, I guess he gets another chance. I'm just not sure how much I should hold it against him because it seemed out of character that he forgot to thank me. You know. Yeah, yeah. He probably was befuddled. He probably was going to try to make a move for the check. Never got to even make the move for the check. And then was like, ah, ah, oh, and then just forgot. Let's go with that. He was going to try to make the move for the check. Hope you took it from him anyway. And then be able to get to thank you. And the plan didn't work. Let's, let's say that and give him another chance. You know, it's it's funny because um, when I met my, uh, so a number of years ago, my, my wife's, my mother-in-law, my wife's mom, I was dating a new guy. And uh, we met him and we went out to dinner. And I'll never forget the bill comes and he just looks at me as the bill gets put in front of me. He says, oh, I'll tell you what, we can split it. And that just pissed me off that he was just assuming like I I just pissed me off. The guy should have offered to pay. Actually, he was the older one and he was kissing up. He was dating, you know, but the way he just said it just pissed me off yet. This kid forgets to thank me, and I kind of letting him slide. I don't know. Am I getting soft at my old age, or was I just taken by the fact that he was not a grown man with a full beard? You know, no, I don't think so. Because I think the fact that he was a kid puts more onus on him to thank you. 
like treat me with a sense of like you're a kid you're not even on my peer but maybe also that fact makes it go you assumed he was thanking you like you're just like oh of course he's thankful because he, he got no money <laughs> but well, if, if i didn't pay everyone was starving well, I knew I was paying. I mean, there was no, I mean, but yeah. So anyway, we'll have to see the next time I meet him, if I meet him another time. Well, since he, we'll see. Since you told him about the podcast, I'm sure he's smart enough to be listening right now. And he's going to be uh, making every effort to atone for his early sins. So I should be getting a text sometime around 7.30 a.m. on Friday, letting me know that uh, he's so sorry? Uh. 10 p.m. Saturday in a drunk stupor, he'll listen. Uh, he'll wake up hungover. 10 p.m. Uh, Sunday, uh, 10 a.m. Sunday, while he's having uh, his cup of coffee, he's gonna say, "I apologize. I, of course, I thank you for that meal." So the other thing he didn't say about uh, why he wanted to meet us, but apparently he told my daughter the reason he wanted to meet us is that he. He wants her to come um, down to his house for a New Year's Eve party. And he didn't think it was right for her to be able to go visit, you know, there without him meeting me first and, and my wife, of course. But he didn't say that to me when I asked him the question. So I think he chickened out of answering the question correctly and forgot to thank me. So uh, I think the bad news is this might be one of his first rodeos, too. I think it is. I actually think it is. And who knew who knew who knew the guy he met was so judgmental? <laughs> I'm real nice at dinner, but afterwards we're talking about you. Wait to hear what I'm gonna say about you on the podcast. <laughs> we'll see if my daughter we'll see if my daughter if she listens to this podcast, if she ever comes home after hearing it. <laughs> Well, might, ne might never see her again. Oh, she's coming. Is she playing ball right now? Uh, that's a whole other thing. Oh, boy. That's a oh, whole other So, no, she's not. That's the answer to the question. Okay. You All asked right. the question, I gave you an answer. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there. But speaking of ball, we were talking about before this, game, uh, this show that uh, I'm wearing my Eagles shirt proudly after that obnoxious spanking they received from uh, – the hated Dallas Cowboys yesterday, but as and people know, I am new to this being an Eagles fan thing. I moved down here, resisted for a while, and I, I come from a franchise with a, a a rich history of being hated by the Eagles, but also oh, rich of being hated, of being not hated winning by, though of everybody, but also a rich history. Uh, I come from being a Cowboy fan, and I went to the 49er game, and uh, as an ex Cowboy fan. And uh, an Eagles fan competing with this team for the number one seed. I had a rich, rich hatred for the 49ers. I uh, They are my second least favorite team after the um, football team from Washington because I still hate those teams more than I hate the teams I'm supposed to hate as an Eagle fan. And when I was a, I never went to an Eagles. It was my first Eagles game. I was so excited. I never went to an Eagles game before. I was never going to go as a Cowboy fan to that stadium. Scared to death to, to, to do that. Figured I would get bald. And these 49er fans walked into Philadelphia, and I am speaking as an Eagle fan my, now. We should be embarrassed as a fandom for letting the 49er fans walk into that stadium, have as much of a presence in that stadium, selling our tickets to those people. Because what we just wanted to, we're such big fans that we want to make make sure we can have our season tickets paid for, and we're going to sell it to another team, a team that we're fighting for the home field advantage. And I think the Eagles fans, uh, I know the Eagles let us down, but we let them down. It was, it was rough. It was rough. And I'm I, I'm at because of my kids uh, thing. When people put on pomp and circumstances. It's hard for me to get fired up because I'm watching the technicalities of the thing, thanks to my son. But I can tell you, they went on too long. They lost. The fan base couldn't even last one song of being fired up for intros. So, Obi, this, the funny thing about it is it, we started this conversation before the podcast started. And I, the only reason I brought it up is because I saw you wearing that shirt. And I, I wasn't at the game, didn't even watch the game. I just know they got their asses handed to them. And I also know they got their asses handed to them again by the the Cowboys. 
And the, the obnoxious Philadelphia fan, which is hilarious that you're telling me they're weak sauce in the stadium, but online, they were puffing their chests all season right up until that 49er game about how great they were and how they kicked their ass last year. They're going to kick their ass again this year. And now all of a sudden I see a chink in the armor because the Philadelphia fans are now calling for the coach to be fired. <laughs> Half the players need to retire. It's amazing. Your, your team has gone from the best team ever to, I'm, I guess, the Jets and the Giants. <laughs> Basically the Jets and the Giants. Well, I think that's a little extreme for the fan base to to be jumping ship that way. I've not seen it in my locals, but I, I believe you. Um, but holy cow, it, it it it's been a it's been a rough two weeks, and uh, I I know for a fact I've heard it on sports radio in my time down here. There are Eagle fans who call themselves Eagle fans, but prefer the Cowboys to lose and the Eagles to win in any given situation. And to get handed our asses by the Cowboys like that to certain Eagle fans, it probably feels the same way that Ohio State fans feel about having lost the game this year to Michigan when that game mattered and kept it. Like, their Eagle fans feel that way about this game more than they do about the loss of the 49ers, which was a worse loss. It was at home. If you win that game, you could you don't have to even play against the Cowboys with the rest of the schedule. That was the game that mattered way more, way more. And and the fans, I'm sure not that, that there is a, a percentage of fans who are like the 49er game uh, and then the Cowboy game. And there are all these 49er fans and Eagle fans like, well, we'll see you again. And I'm like, are you not aware there is a team in Texas that really is playing great football right now? We both fans should be scared that we're not going to meet again. And then the Cowboys stomp the Eagles' faces. It hurt. It hurt. And you guys lost to the Jets this year, too. That's kind of pathetic. Well, every – it is of rare exception that a great team in a season in the, in the NFL does not have one loss, and it's like not usually to a good team. Like, the great team doesn't usually lose to the other great team in the regular season. They lose to some schmo. <laughs> like that's just what happens. So, 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 Obi, since we're going down the sports and uh, we've lost all our audience anyway, so let's double down on the sports talk because something happened yesterday that just makes me shake my head. Like, I, I just don't get it. The Chiefs pull off an amazing play to seemingly win the game, right? And it gets called back because their wide receiver is offsides. Now, for those of you who know the game, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know the game, just explain it for you a little bit. The wide receiver had his foot. He was standing in front of the ball. Like You have to stand behind the ball before it's snapped. He was standing in front of the ball. Plain as the eye could see, he was standing in front of the ball. So the refs call the, fa- the penalty. But the Chiefs. They lose their freaking minds as if they should get a freebie, as if that's not a penalty, as if it's never called. And uh, the lack of accountability is just shocking. And I think the Chiefs may become one of the most disliked teams over this. Um, I totally agree. So my first thought when I saw Patrick Mahomes react, and it turns out it wasn't an original or the only thought I had was, you won the Super Bowl <laughs> on a ticky tack play that was legitimately the right call. The entire world was prevented from having the Eagles have one last drive. Win or lose, I'm not saying the Eagles won our Super Bowl last year. But, boy, that game would have been that much better to put the ball in the Eagles' offense. Like, the entire NFL, everything Patrick Mahomes said was exactly true of that penalty. That And, I, and then – Multiple big name, I wouldn't say multiple people I follow in sports talk on many of my platforms are like, you're saying exactly what I thought. You think that was a penalty that shouldn't have been called? What about the penalty that won you the Super Bowl? Talk about, and so I, yeah, I think Patrick Mahomes, who has been fantastic at not blaming his wide receivers all season, 
but obviously angry at them and is probably still angry at them, but decided to take his anger out at somebody else and be the perfect teammate is now just gotten to the point where now people are going to hate him because everybody, enough people see what I saw, which is that's how you won last year. That's how you won the Super Bowl. Well, I'll even go a step further though. Last year, you know, judgment fouls are one thing. This was not a judgment foul. You, it's not judgment on whether his foot was in front. It's like, oh, well, maybe. No, his freaking foot was in front of the football. The other <laughs> side, he, he was so offside and had so much to do that he can cap, perfect himself. Oh, well, offside. there's there's things you can do. We don't even want to go into it, but there's things that you can do that you're supposed to do is check with the – like, here's the other crazy thing. In football, for those of you who don't know, if you're a wide receiver, you can look at the ref to your side – who's, you know, checking out if you're offside and ask him, am I offside? And he will give you the answer before, you know, before it's a penalty. So he'll tell you, yes, move. This guy didn't do it. He's standing. He didn't do it. They did everything wrong. And then Mahomes loses his mind. And not only does he lose his mind on the, the sideline, Obi, which I think was bad enough, because again, you're offside. It's as if you got upset because you threw a perfect pass and your wide receiver dropped it. And you're going on and on about it should have been a touchdown. But it's clear as day. He dropped it. Clear as day. This guy's offside. But it gets worse. He goes to to shake hands with the other quarterback, and he's bitching to the other quarterback as if the other quarterback has any sympathy for him. Like, what is it? What did he expect Josh Allen to say when he said that was a bullshit call? What is? Did he expect him to say yes, it was? And I'll tell you what. Let me go call the ref and tell him you should have won. Like, what does he expect him to say? I just think it's it's uh it's not it's uncouth. It's it's not even classless. It's just like, are you kidding me? Are you, you're a grown man. Are you kidding me? So, yeah, the only defense I heard for him, and it's one of, is that he has been so good at not blaming his wide receivers over the course of the season, which, by the way, this is the second game that Katerius Tony lost for this team. He's lost two games for them. I don't know if he has a touch. This guy is, this guy should be cut. Like the Giants, this is the best move the Giants have made in the last five years is getting rid of this guy. He obviously sucks at football. Uh, at the professional level, better than me, but not a professional football player. Uh, I just think he was just trying to be a good teammate, and so he took it out on the refs. But I think he was. I think. I think if you were to ask him in an honest moment, I think he's like, no, we have this Kateri. He can't. Can't catch. Can't run routes. Can't even light up. I, but okay, fine. But even if you're protecting your player. Why are you yelling at the other? Why are you saying that to the other quarterback? I I I think I don't know. I don't know. I I think it just got in his head. This is what he was going to do. He was angry. He was oh he 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 went all in and then he doubled down. Oh my oh, god, he, he doubled he down. He was definitely angry. And I think I what I think happened is he was angry. Was able as a quarterback and team player to focus his anger at something else, which it should not have been focused at, but was just in and he just. Lost, I, I think he lost it, and the only thing is, instead of losing it on Tony, he was just able to change his focus just enough and couldn't couldn't control himself. Obviously, and then, and then, re, and then the coach afterwards, he didn't take any like he he, he again like nobody. It's not a penalty. Like in some in some weird way, this is not a. It's crazy. And here's the other thing: why I lose respect for the Kansas City Chiefs over this call, the Saints. A number of years ago, the Saints literally got robbed when that pass interference. I mean, their what their wide receiver got tackled, right? And they didn't call pass interference, and nobody on the team acted this way. Fan base lost their minds. Was going to boycott well, the Super well, Bowl. Well, oh, but but did not the players. Fan base should lose their mind, but the players the players actually should have acted like Patrick Mahomes did yesterday. Over an all obvious offside. So anyway, I'm I'm uh, down on Patrick Mahomes. Still up on uh, Taylor Swift. She was in the house yesterday. Tony Romo married her off to Travis Kelsey already on the on the on the broadcast. I heard it. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but uh, yeah, so now at first Taylor Swift was clearly a good luck charm for the Kansas City Chiefs. Starting to trend towards maybe a, a jinx. Uh, I, I don't think she's either. I think she is a person, and I think um, I think the Chiefs, if we're talking football, have legitimate concerns about their lineup and uh, their offense. And 
Well, they may not make the playoffs. That's just a fact. Yeah, yeah, they are. Well, they have the one. They, I, I think they will make the playoffs. I don't think they'll be a home team. Get the home field advantage, and um, maybe they pull it together. Maybe they don't. But like you said, this is not a um, sports podcast, but it is uh, you know a podcast that we discuss things. And I want to take it back and use this sports podcast to to get back to other things. So. As I was talking about the game, I will also say, I told you at one point the audience just wasn't the fan base wasn't in it even at the beginning, and I was expecting this to be the most electric atmosphere I've ever been in, and it was not. It was electric, don't get me wrong, but I've been to uh, multiple concerts and a regular season NBA game that have had more electricity than this. Now the regular season NBA game, it was at the it was a game that went the whole distance. It was a good game matchup of uh two playoff teams and the game went down to the final you know place so this game did not and it could have built to that but concerts are really incredibly electric now six hundred dollars for a folk singer possibly country music artist that i haven't heard of sounds crazy because six hundred dollars isn't for taylor swift sounds crazy to me i think you know, two fifty is a lot. I know inflation, but I was feel like I was paying fifty dollars a ticket for good seats to good concerts. Right. So that's why what that's why I was complaining about that, Obi, because in my head, like I'm stuck in that you should be able to get a good ticket for fifty to seventy five dollars, and anything over that is freaking ridiculous. I don't remember how long ago it was, but it was in adulthood. Uh, YouTube, YouTube. U2 was playing here in Philly, and I got in um, on, at Ticketmaster, like, first come, it was one of the still first come, first serve days, and the floor seat was $110. And so I was going to – I ended up not purchasing the tickets, but I did get in and have the option and did not buy them in the end. But I think part of this is, from what I – is this flex pricing that they've been able to figure out how much a ticket is actually worth at the time of purchase versus let's guess and then let somebody on the secondary market make what they're going to make by selling the ticket for 600 bucks. So I, that's part of the, the, the thing is technology has killed us, the consumer, oh. because they know exactly what the street value of the ticket is. Yeah, well, it's obviously technology. Well, it's technology and the loosening of the laws, right? So it used to be illegal to sell a ticket over face value. Not to say it didn't happen, but it was illegal. And so to do it, you had to do it in the parking lot. And how would you know what other people were selling for? Right? Like, so you could get ripped off. You could get a great deal. But now, because everything's online, it's really easy to see that everybody in that section selling their tickets for X dollars. And so if you want to sell yours, you're going to sell yours for X plus one, right? I mean, it's, it's not, X you're not, minus one. X minus or, one. or X minus one, one, or, one way or the other, right? You're right. going to try to make more money or you're going to, but so I think that drives the price of tickets up as well. And then the other thing is, is I think the scalpers or the ticket agencies, right? I think they get, they're getting first dibs at all the good tickets now, right? Because, the venue just wants to sell their tickets. So it doesn't matter who they sell them to. And then boom, it goes on to the next. And then I'm not so sure, but the venue may even get a cut of these tickets. So like when the ticket gets resold for $200 over face, for all I know, the venue and the artists are getting a piece of that too. I don't Hold know. Hold on a second. I need to stop. So this $600 price of the ticket was, was on the secondary market. It was not the primary market. Well, so it it is on the primary, it's on the secondary market. But here's okay. the other thing about that, Obi. Go to Ticketmaster today. Try to figure out if it's the primary ticket you're paying for or the secondary ticket. Because Ticketmaster has its own secondary market. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I get that. I get, I, yes, I know. And you don't know whether what you're buying when. And that's the thing. Because if, but even if you buy a ticket, like I remember some of these tickets that were on sale at the primary market, People were furious at the artist for charging so much for a ticket. But the thing was, well, you're angry. That's cute. But somebody's buying the ticket for that price. Well, so here's something interesting about the Stones, right? So the the, the pre-sale for them was a couple of weeks ago. And uh, my buddy was going to get the tickets. So he went online. He texted me, said, a thousand bucks. We're not paying a thousand bucks for, for a ticket. I'm like, all right, you're right. I'm not paying a thousand bucks to go see the Stones. Two weeks later, got them for 270 so they priced them high. 
Waited didn't, to see. Di- didn't sell them all, and then they came down. I was talking to another buddy today about the Rose Bowl. He's going to the Rose Bowl to see Michigan play Alabama. And he's like, the tickets are well over $450 each right now. But what he's heard is the ticket prices are going to come down after Christmas because the season ticket holders who put all their their, uh, requests in for Alabama and Michigan haven't gotten their tickets yet. So they haven't been able to sell them yet, right? Like, Because some people are going to buy them just to sell them. Right. And so then there's going to be a gluttony of, of tickets on the market when they get it. So the price will go down. Right. So right now it's higher than maybe it will be when there's more tickets that come into the market. So but the point is, you used to in like in my head, I can get a ticket for under 100 bucks, a good ticket for under 100 bucks to anything I want. And that's impossible today. You're not getting anything, anything under 100. Right. Let, right. let alone under 200, maybe. That, that's so. So Alex doesn't get to see a folk singer or she has to find the tickets herself at reasonable price. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know how she's going to, maybe the day before they, they're going to come down. Not really sure, but 600 bucks to see some guy I never heard of who sings about drunk dialing and stick season up in Vermont. I'm not going to go see him. Stick season in Vermont. Drunk drive. Drunk Dial. dialing. Drunk yeah. dialing. Drunk dialing. Yeah. Drunk dialing is something we didn't do. I mean, we did, but we just called each other. We didn't drunk dial uh, like they do on the phones. Like now, I've always wanted to call that girl. I Wait, be- you 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 never drunk dialed a girl in your life when you shouldn't have been calling her in the first place. Yeah, of course I have, but it was okay. like so you 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 try to say you never did. Okay, I meant like I think it's just easier now. Like, well, it might be easier because we have the phone with us at all times, but don't tell me you never did it. We've well, all I mean, done it. I, we've all done it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Which is why the song is so relatable. And, you're right. You're right. I, I've i never drunk texted a girl in my life, though. Oh, I've never done that either. That That's something I'll go to my grave saying I've never done. That's good. To, that's good. I have never done that. Right. And that's probably more dangerous than drunk dialing. Yes, and that's where I was with it. It was just like, you're right. I, we totally did it. It just to me, it was like texting was really what we it was. we had to go home and find the wall, the phone that was tied to the you know that was screwed into the wall so that we right. could call. Right, and and we had and we had to fight two other drunk dialers for that phone. Yeah, right. Somebody <laughs> may have already been on it. I want to drunk dial someone. That's right. I'm busy doing that. She really wants to hear from me. She lo- she loves me. Dude, she dumped you six months ago. But she loves me. She wants me back. I know I exactly know. what. I have the words now. I know what to say. I saw her friends at the bar. And they didn't ignore me. So she must be into me. That's right. That's exactly how it goes. That's how it goes. And it sucks. And yeah, those calls, is- those calls always sucked. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they did, and the charm is that we suck. I'm Obi. That's it. Catch you next time on Drinking from the Garden Hose.